Visit our fabulous sponsor, Ka Gold Jewelry, link in the description below. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of May 19, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. This is a week where it is gonna feel like the lights have come on, where the energy changes in an instant. As we are starting this week, we are doing so with the energy of the intense Scorpio full moon that I talked about last week. Now, that full moon had one that was stirring a whole lot of emotions and a whole lot of us. Well, it is going to be as we navigate further into this week that in an instant, it is going to feel like the energy lightens. Now, part of the reason is right around Tuesday, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet, we are going to have both the sun and Mercury move into the sign of Gemini. So happy birthday to all the Geminis out there. But it is as this configuration moves into a new sign and connects in perfection that we will start to feel a change. Now the sign of Gemini, very different energy than the sign of Scorpio. That full moon late last week had uh, an energy of emotion, an energy of depth, an energy of needing to look at our own emotional reactions and where it was that what we were feeling was based on a particular situation or was it rather our perception of a particular situation? Is it that we were assessing things accurately and where was it that we needed to step back a little bit and see things from a more empowered place? Now that is ultimately the higher vibration of Scorpio. It's about understanding power more deeply. Remember, the ancient ruling planet of Scorpio is the planet Mars. So it is ultimately Mars that has to do with, I like to think it has to do with the serenity prayer or the serenity affirmation, which is grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. And so yes, the sign of Aries being ruled by Mars has that understanding as well, but it's a much more active outward principle. In the sign of Scorpio, still ruled by the planet Mars, we are still incorporating and understanding the serenity prayer, but it is more uh, the higher end, the more spiritual end, or uh, the more profound and subtle side of understanding power, what it is, where it is, and where it is not, especially in terms of how we empower ourselves. And so yes, chances are for at least a couple of people out there, it felt like they took a dive into a pool of some very strong feelings and uh, that isn't always very comfortable. It can feel a little like we're walking around with a knot in our stomach, a sense of heightened energy, uh, a sense of uh, almost as if we wish that we could feel lighter, but the energy can feel rather heavy with that scorpion vibe. Well, the great thing is that once we get into this week, and particularly once we get to this shift of energy with planets moving into the sign of Gemini, this is an energy that is light. It is mind. It is spontaneous. Uh, it is very much about just being in the moment. It's an energy of synchronicity. And wherever it is in your sky, in your chart, based on your sun sign, your moon sign, or your rising sign, um, that is an area where we are going to experience a heightened sense of synchronicity, meaning that we find ourselves in the right place at the right time, connecting with the right person, and receiving information that makes all the difference. Making a connection where it feels like things have just come together for us enough to lift what otherwise would be heavy emotional energy and lift it to the level of intellect and the level of mind. You know, I actually think that this is one of the reasons why therapy is so useful for so many people. And so if you've ever gone through a therapeutic process, which is essentially uh, talking to somebody, right? Talking to a professional person. Um, you may know that it tends to be a very diligent process. There is a, a book that was a huge bestseller back in the day. It was called The Road Less Traveled by Scott M. Peck. Uh, this book really uh, took over the world for a brief period of time. 
And uh, this book is written by a psychiatrist and it's essentially that the road less traveled is one of self-awareness. It's one where we allow ourselves to go through a therapeutic process, a, a psychiatric process, a psychological process so that we come out changed, so that we understand ourselves and we, we come out being a better version of ourselves. But in this book, Scott M. Peck says that he will not see anyone who does not commit to coming regularly for at least two years because he felt that you needed at least two years to experience any kind of truly meaningful, lasting change. He wasn't interested in like sort of superficial fixes. He wanted to actually help people to usher them into a more empowered, more clear versions of themselves. And so what does counseling generally involve? It involves talking, right? You talk about uh, your day or you talk about your feelings, you talk about your past, you talk about your childhood. And what tends to happen in any therapeutic process is that first you're going and the first few sessions, you're kind of dancing around a little bit. And what I mean by that is um, sometimes, very often, the person who comes for therapy, we can call them the client or the patient, they're not really ready for the root cause. They're not really ready to sink in and truly understand what it is and, and why it is that they are unhappy. It takes some time to get there. And even if the counselor or the psychologist or the psychiatrist, even if they can see what's going on, even if they're able to assess very quickly, they have to be mindful uh, to let the person come to that place on their own, uh, not to rush the process, not to rush the journey. And in those first sessions, maybe the first 10 sessions or the first 20 sessions, it's more about uh, creating a space of trust where we can talk about these things and then slowly but surely uh, going a little bit deeper, a little bit less superficial, a little bit more to meaningful levels, uh, one layer at a time. And it is in this journey into the core of the self that the person is then able to transform deeply and rise from that place. It's much like the uh, the myth of Inanna in the Epic of Gilgamesh where uh, she goes into the underworld and on her journey into the underworld, she is uh, taking off one layer, one at a time, that uh, makes it clear, that presents her as a queen in the world. And it is only when she gets to the depths and she is truly bare uh, that she comes to understand something much more profound, much more deeply. And then when she comes out on the other side, the whole world looks different. She realizes the true nature of her uh, relationships, of dynamics, of her life from a very different perspective. This can be thought of, and I've always made the connection of Inanna's uh, descent uh, as connected to a Pluto transit. Absolutely. And I actually wrote an academic paper about this that you can read on my website, NadiaShaw.com, uh, under articles. But um, it is also useful to consider this energy uh, when we consider the therapeutic process, where it is about diving deep, and slowly but surely releasing one more layer that gets in the way of getting to the core, of getting to the truth, the root core sadness or the, the root core uh, problem or disturbance or reason that genuine happiness is not there the reason that brought you to therapy in the first place. And it is in rising that we find ourselves. So I actually think that there is a really good reason why the therapeutic process very often, not always, because a lot of people do uh, things like body work or uh, they work on other levels uh, to facilitate transformation, but very often talking is part of it. And I think that's because when we talk about things, we are engaging mind, we're engaging air, we're engaging Gemini energy. And that energy is a little lighter, right? It's a little lighter than feeling things and just being in the depth of emotion to the point where you can't even describe it. Once you start describing it, the energy starts to rise. It rises out of like, I don't know where you feel emotion, but I think a lot of us, we feel it like in the pit of our stomach, right? That is uh, our gut, like we call our gut feeling. Uh, we feel it there, we'll feel it in our heart, right? These are very deep parts of our uh, ethereal body, you could uh, consider it. But it is once we raise that energy to mind that the energy starts to lighten. 
that we start to get another perspective, that we start to decide um, more clearly, that we are granted clarity to actually understand. And from that place of understanding, we can actually decide a different present and a different future for ourselves. And so in this way, I think that in spiritual circles, very often we will place a lot of emphasis on the emotional experience, the spiritual experience, the, you know, leaving the body behind uh, and getting the chatter to quiet down. While all of these have their place and they're very valuable, there is a lot of value in also being able to intellectualize, being able to rationalize and being able to speak. You know, I will be talking later about upcoming uh, Synchronicity University classes that I'm doing. And one of the classes is going to be on astrological magic. And I was a little bit hesitant to add that class. Normally I just do four classes, like one session is four classes, but I really wanted to add that class. And the reason is because um, with astrological magic, you start to understand how powerful our intentions are and how ourselves, just as we live, we are the embodiment of astrology. That it isn't that astrology is out there and we're reading the planets, but that we are astrology itself. And that there is this very intricate history behind interpreting the stars and connecting to the stars to facilitate meaningful change in your life. And so anyways, as part of this class, because I'm all about, you know, the, the philosophy and the background, because I feel like if you understand where something comes from, if you understand the history, if you understand the philosophy, it gives you reverence. Nothing just comes out of nowhere. It is so important to have that sense of appreciation of your ancestors. And I don't just mean your physical ancestors. Yes, we have a physical tradition, but we also come from intellectual traditions. We are connected to our intellectual ancestors and who your intellectual ancestors ancestors are, are those people with ideas that you resonate with, who lived before you. Your intellect is connected to their intellectual expression. And in that way, they are your ancestors. Your spiritual ancestors are those who expressed spirituality in a way that resonates with you today. And in this way, they are your spiritual ancestors. And in this way, we are all descendants of each other. We are all connected to each other. And so I actually think that there is a lot of value in understanding our ancestors, our, whether you want to call it astrological uh, magic ancestors in light of this particular class or otherwise. Um, there's a certain respect that comes. And I think that without respect, um, then the intention ends up not being as powerful as it can be. So anyways, as part of this class, there are a couple of things that we're definitely going to look at. So we are going to look at uh, and touch on Picatrix, the text Picatrix. Uh, we are going to look at the ideas of Iamblichus and Plotinus, who are truly foundational to modern esoteric practice today. So uh, I'll put that aside for a second, because the reason I mention it, and there is a reason, it's because uh, I remember coming across the work of Plotinus in particular. So Plotinus stated that we can uh, get together, we can gather all of our correspondences at the exact astrological hour, uh, and correspondences are essentially those things that correspond with your intention. Uh, and so certain herbs or certain candles, uh, certain oils, uh, there are a lot of ways to understand what correspondences are. And again, we'll dive into that in the class. But you could gather all your things and you could gather at the hour, the astrological hour of your intention. But it isn't until you speak it, it isn't until you say it, that it can manifest. And it is once you have said it, that it has already manifested, that you are already at that aim. And so according to Plotinus, it is the word that is the root of all creation all manifestation. And I think that this is why, you know, most of the people by far who are going to sit in a therapist's office at some point in their life are aware of the teachings of Plotinus. Um, but I do believe that this is essentially what they're practicing. It is a practice of alchemy. They are 
already transformed simply by speaking, simply by communicating, simply by sharing. Now, of course, there are lots of different ways to communicate, right? Of course, we uh, emphasize the word. This is the way that it was expressed at the time. But there are other ways to express that as well. There are other ways to communicate. But I actually think that what happens in a, a therapeutic process has been called an alchemical process because it facilitates transformation. It turns your lead into gold. And the way it does that is through engaging air, engaging the intellect, engaging mind, expressing words. That is how transformation has already occurred. A new version of you has already shown up. You just need to walk the steps to get there. And so I think that this is going to be really very nice as people take what otherwise has been really rooted and really heavy and really uh, difficult to understand. For some of us, it's been a very emotional full moon and start to raise that energy and translate that into words and to know that as you translate it into words, the transformation has already been done. You are already there at a new version of yourself. It's just that you needed the words to get you there. And so this is part of the value, I think, of this beautiful, perfectly timed connection uh, between the sun and Mercury. This sense of freedom and lightness that we are being promised, this sense of transformed energy is further affirmed by a connection that will be taking place right around Wednesday, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet, between Mars and Uranus. It is a harmonious connection that astrologers call a sextile. I actually feel like this is one of my favorite celestial connections to take place. I love it when Mars and Uranus speak in harmony for a few reasons. I think that it is energizing, uh, certainly, but it's also lucky. It is, uh, it is embodied, but it is freeing. And it's a sense of surprises that delight us, that move us into our future, that help us to leap forward. And it is a sense when these two planets speak together of true empowerment that is based on an authentic understanding of self, based on some connection to our own truth that we become motivated to live. And as we actually take action, that action is rewarded very quickly and creates a momentum that spurs us forward. Since the middle of last week, Mars has been moving through the sign of Cancer. And of course, we have this major move right now, a long-term transit of Uranus moving through the sign of Taurus. And so when you think about um, Mars and Cancer, Cancer, of course, is an energy that has to do with uh, uh, the mother archetype. It is a lunar archetypal energy. It has to do with our emotion, yes, um, but it is also connected to a sense of nurturing and what it means to be nurtured and to give ourselves nurturance, body, mind, and spirit. Now, it is, of course, Uranus and Taurus that is all about embodiment. It is an earth energy, um, but Uranus is not very embodied, right? It's an energy of mind and freedom from the body. Um, if you think about it, Uranus's discovery launched the age of enlightenment. And even though in uh, astrological circles and new age circles, when we hear the word enlightenment, we think of the Buddha, we think of Nirvana. Um, but for uh, previous generations, the Age of Enlightenment was a time of hyper-scientism and was characterized by what has been called the Cartesian Split. And so the Cartesian Split comes from Descartes and it's basically, I think, therefore I am. That's the Cartesian Split right there. Um, I think, therefore I am. Body is one thing, mind is another thing. And I feel, as I spoke about in the Uranus Special Horoscope, that um, Uranus moving into the sign of Taurus is going to encourage us in some way to re-examine, to reconfigure this idea of I think, therefore I am. It's going to flip it in some way. And what we're going to find is a bit of a dichotomy where uh, some people will really have this emphasis on the split. And we may see that as part of the collective, uh, but others will find themselves much more integrated uh, and emphasizing 
how it is that spirit infuses matter. And so we have this energy of Uranus that is very much lifted, that is outside of Earth outside of body. Um, it has to do with electricity and waves and thoughts that are moving very, very quickly. And then we have Mars. Mars is very much about the body. It is very physical. It is about the truth that you feel. It is about what you know to be true about yourself because you feel it, because you are connected to it, and then acting from that place of self-knowledge. And then you have these energies coming together in decidedly feminine signs. And it allows us to incorporate how uh, well it is that emotion can be channeled. It allows us to consider a healthy way of embodiment and a way to empower ourselves that takes emotion into account, but also doesn't let emotion rule, but finds that right balance between mind and body. And by doing this, we are granted not only freedom, because this energy is very freeing, it's very liberating, it is uh, as if the energy can change in an instant and for the better, but also towards our greater fortune. This is an energy of the future. Now, what's also interesting is that the sign of cancer is very much about tradition, right? It's a sign that's been associated with things like patriotism, uh, with things like our connection to our nation, to our ethnicity. Um, but then we have this beautiful connection uh, between Uranus and Mars and Cancer, but Uranus is all about, wait, we're all equal. We all have mind and therefore we all are the same. And that is why it is the planet Uranus that is a symbol of human rights because it is a representative of that part of us, in all of us, in which divine energy runs and is therefore equal. And so these two planets getting together like this in this harmonious connection, I feel like there's gonna be a lot of motivation to raise the otherwise intense energy and instead, to realize that there are ways in which we can be connected to the past, connected to our bodies, and yet be free. There are ways in which we can understand the practical realities of the world and of our lives, and yet not be dictated by external circumstances. And there are ways in which we can actually lift other people, we can raise people up so that they see that part within them that is like all of us, that is divine and inspired. And also on another level, if I'm being really straightforward about it, this is just lucky. This is lucky energy in at least one area of life. All of us are gonna find ourselves catching a lucky streak. What I love about this week for us, well, look, there is a lot here, but I am gonna say that connection between Mercury and the sun. I think that the shift in energy will be very welcome by a lot of people. As I've been on social media, a lot of people have been saying things like, oh, it's so intense, oh, it's so hard. Um, and I've been like, just wait, wait until we get here, wait until we get to this week because it will change and it will change quickly, meaning the energy of the people, of circumstances and of us will change very quickly. And the thing is, once you have a taste of freedom, you can't go back. You can't go back because freedom is such an essential urge of being a human being. I really believe that. And I have contemplated this very deeply. I am a person who values my freedom above and beyond anything else. I have created a life where I get to celebrate and be in my freedom as much as possible. Maslow has this very famous pyramid that is called the hierarchy of needs. And at the very bottom of this hierarchy of needs are our basic needs of food, clothing, and shelter, right? That's just survival. But once those needs are met, we as human beings, our needs will evolve, they will elevate, they will change, and they will move on. And so we have a need for relationships, we have a need for love, and at the very top of it is our need for self-actualization 
as I like to say, to be well used for the things that you like about yourself. And he described it as true creative fulfillment. Well, I actually think, and I don't know, I don't remember right now in this moment if he put it there, but I am convinced that one of our essential human needs is the need for freedom. And I think that this has driven history. It has driven us and the human spirit to where it is today. This beautiful connection and all of the sky uh, with all the emphasis on air, the emphasis on intellect, and the emphasis on bodies and on emotion and raising that energy. I think that this is going to be a powerful moment, a celebration of this essential part of us that needs to know freedom, that needs to be in freedom and celebrate our freedom as well. Yes, there are all kinds of needs that we have. We have social needs. We have needs to know love. And in this way, I think that we actually are very equal. There are very core archetypal human experiences that we all go through, no matter what your circumstance, no matter where it is that you're from, where it is that you were born, where it is that you live. I have seen this again and again in my travels, uh, in my uh, exploration of philosophies, again and again, what you see is that we as human beings are remarkably alike in that we will want certain core archetypal experiences. So with the full moon, we dived into one of them, right? The need to feel things deeply um, and an archetypal experience also of insecurity. That can be part of that vibration of the full moon we had at the very end of last week. But now the energy will change. It will lighten and it will remind us to ascend, to move up that Maslow's hierarchy of needs and to move towards something a little bit more evolved and a little bit more connected and move towards something that actually brings us happiness and peace. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? What is it that inspires you? What is it that motivates you? How was your week last week? How is that full moon treating you? Let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love reading you guys. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, thumbs up, and thank you to everybody joining me in the live premiere. I've really been enjoying interacting with you all. So thank you to the live people and thank you to the people watching this on the replay. I appreciate each and every one of you. Of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you in your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com, sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. I have brand new special horoscopes available now. They are free to superstars in the superstar space or available for sale on my website, NadiaShaw.com. And it is the Decade Ahead Horoscopes, looking at the 2020s for each and every sign. I hope you absolutely love it. Now, of course, I couldn't go into the kind of detail that I go into as we go along week to week or month to month or year to year and all the other special horoscopes that I do create. Um, but what I did with the Decade Ahead Horoscopes is that I focused in on what I thought would be most relevant for that sign, for whatever video it was, for whatever sign, I tried to think, okay, what's gonna be relevant for this sign? So for example, Taurus, as we were just talking about that energy, uh, Uranus is gonna leave your sign, right? That's gonna be a really big deal. Uh, the eclipses that are gonna happen in your sign, that's gonna be a big deal as well. Uh, Saturn and Jupiter are going to square Uranus. Ceres, the asteroid, is going to conjunct Uranus while Uranus is in your sign. This is gonna be a big deal for Taurians as well. And so this is where I tried to focus, like really hone in on the big time frames, the big years where you will notice big shifts. And of course, I'll be here to talk about it as we go along. As I said, week to week in the superstar space, month to month on YouTube, and with all the special horoscopes that I create as well, year to year and more. Uh, we'll keep talking about it, but if it is that you're really curious to know and you're interested to know how the coming decade is going to play out for you, uh, then have a look. Log on to my website, NadiaShaw.com. And again, you can sign up to be a superstar or you can get it uh, in the shop uh, on my website. And I hope that you absolutely love them. 
I'll give you a little bit of a heads up. The energy is going to shift so profoundly. And I tell you, when I did these, when I saw the sky, I thought of how important it is to keep perspective. Um, because I think that sometimes we get so caught up in a moment. That's part of what this full moon in Scorpio has been. A lot of people getting caught up in a moment, depending on their individual circumstances. Uh, but the truth is that right now, the energy with the outer planets is very Earth and water. All the outer planets right now are in Earth and water. Um, and these are energies that are very embodied. They're very emotional. But the energy is going to change. And as we get to the middle of the next decade, one by one, all of these planets are going to move from earth and water to fire and air. Air is going to start to become the more dominant energy in the sky and strong fire energy as well. And that tells me that we as humanity, we're already going through a shift with the conjunction of Saturn and Pluto, which I do talk about for each and every sign with right out of the gate with that meeting of Saturn and Pluto. It is when we navigate into the middle of the decade and the energy shifts so much uh, that uh, so many things will start to look different in the collective. And this really is the uh, age of Aquarius that a lot of people have been talking about. This is when the age of Aquarius and that dichotomy it's going to start to become so much more obvious. And of course, that will speak to us as a collective. Uh, keep an eye out in the days and weeks ahead. I will be sure to publish an overview video so that you get a chance to explore what this could mean for the collective in greater depth. Uh, but certainly in our personal journeys as well, it is going to represent a major change of focus for us, like a new phase of life beginning and really big opportunities kick it off. And so I really, really hope that you love them. Of course, you can see preview horoscopes as well. If you go onto my Instagram, I posted the preview horoscopes there. And again, thank you. Thank you for your trust. Uh, I just released that a couple of days ago and I've already been getting so much amazing feedback and I appreciate each and every one of you uh, who've watched it uh, again in the superstar space or downloaded it on my website. Thank you to all of you. Events. I got big events coming up. Well, let's start with the online event I have. I mentioned I started talking about one of my classes as part of Synchronicity University, the summer school session. We are going to have so much fun, but there is a difference this time that I think is really exciting. And the difference is that if you register in the month of May, you get to choose your tuition. And I really wanted to do this because I wanted to make these classes more accessible to more people. I wanted people to have the experience of actually being in a class with me to see how it is. And also to just be able to take these classes because I know that it can be a different situation for everybody. But basically you will have a choice. You can pay as little as $5 a class and there is a bonus class as well so in total we're going to meet over six weeks but it's only uh, five classes that you'll be paying for and so if it is that uh, the cost of tuition is important to you it matters to you uh, then I would encourage you to register this month or this week because we're like in sort of the last full week of May because it will only be in May that you'll be able to choose your tuition and there's a variable tuition rate. You can, as I said, pay as little as $5 a class. You can choose to pay $10 a class, $20 a class, uh, the regular price of $35 a class. Uh, so you have those options there. Uh, I would invite you to log on and see the amazing classes I will be offering. As far as beginner students, if you have the knowledge that is in my book, Astrology Realized, if you have read my book, you'll be able to keep up. You will be able to understand what it is that we're learning and what it is we're talking about. Class descriptions are there as well and they should be helpful to you. Um, what are we gonna be learning? Well, we're gonna be looking at childhood in the astrology chart, exploring someone's childhood. Uh, we will be uh, discussing more about forgiveness. I did a class on forgiveness in the last session and it was really very popular. And when I asked uh, online, what more classes would you guys like? That was uh, the first thing, the main thing that people said that they got a lot out of the first class on forgiveness. So we will be exploring forgiveness with greater depth.
astrological strategies for happiness and success is another class another is uh, exploring the midheaven in the astrology chart and as i already spoke of in the overview uh, we're going to be doing another class on astrological magic um, as i said i was very cautious i really uh, needed to contemplate whether or not i could do this with integrity and i believe that i can uh, we are not going to be initiating you into any tradition okay um, but what we are going to be doing is exploring some of the historical and philosophical roots and then i'll be giving you some really introductory information on uh, understanding correspondences and the types of correspondences that there are and what the different moon cycles in particular could mean and so what i hope is that could give you a little bit of an introduction and hopefully uh, inspire you to learn even more and see where it is from there your spiritual interests take you um, I also wanted to add that uh, I mentioned the book, The Picatrix. The Picatrix is actually a text uh, that meant a lot to me. Uh, when I, um, uh, my sponsor, you may know Coggle Jewelry, I mentioned my sponsor at the beginning of this video. Uh, when they became my sponsor, they said, hey, you know, you can choose something on our website up to this amount. Um, but what I saw and what I resonated was a, with a ring and uh, the ring had symbols from the Picatrix on it. And um, I actually paid more so that I could have that because that uh, was something that meant a lot to me. Uh, I wrote an academic paper on the Picatrix when I was in graduate school. And again, you can read that on my website uh, under articles. Uh, it's called the Picatrix academic paper on my website. And um, actually some of the rituals in there, like I know that some of my ancestors practiced those rituals and ancestors that I feel a strong connection to. So this uh, text meant a lot to me. It meant a lot to me to learn more about it uh, and to write about it. And so we will be talking about the Picatrix because this is a text that is hugely influential in modern occult practice today um, and has influenced, you know, many, many an astrological magic practitioner uh, right to this day. And so we will be talking about that as well. But like I said, we will be doing it all with reverence and respect and with a focus on understanding uh, the tradition and the philosophy but we are not initiating you okay um, this is about uh, helping you to understand uh, some of what makes astrology and just being an astrologer uh, and to be an embodiment of astrology that we all are is actually something uh, quite magical and quite beautiful and I hope that that class very near and dear to my heart uh, imparts that to you as well as I said you can choose your tuition if you sign up in the month of May and it is only in the month of May that you get to choose your tuition after that the price will go back to the normal price right up until uh, the class begins so again I look forward to meeting you online uh, and I am looking forward to a wonderful uh, summer session with you in-person events i am going to be next weekend in seattle so next week's video is going to come to you live from seattle so you'll see a different background probably my hotel room or something we'll see or maybe not maybe i'll be out in a hallway somewhere uh, but whatever it is it's going to be fun and it is the norwak conference if it is that uh, you'd like to go there is a waiting list and i know that some spots recently opened up so some people on the waiting list were able to get a registration if you'd like to go uh, make sure you contact the organizer right away uh, to get yourself on that list and if it is a part of your karmic journey you will find yourself there uh, but I will be there certainly I'll be teaching two classes I believe my classes are on Friday and Saturday uh, life purpose in the astrology chart and signatures of long-term love uh, in the synastry chart those are the classes that I will be teaching. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to meeting everybody out there in Seattle. It's going to be my first time. At some point, I'm going to get a little bit of a break and I am going to go to the very first Starbucks. Yes, I said it. I'm going to go a symbol of the monoculture. I am going to go visit the very first Starbucks and get a keychain for myself. So I'm looking forward to that too. And I've just heard such great things about Seattle. Um, I have one spot left for consultation. So if it is that you are in the Seattle area and you would like to sit down with me for an in-person consultation, we can absolutely make that happen. Uh, use the contact form on my website and we can move forward from there.
Labor Day weekend, I will be in Baltimore. So I'm really excited about that as well as part of the NCGR conference. Uh, now that doesn't have as limited a registration, so everybody's welcome, you can join us. Um, but yes, please do meet us in Baltimore. Uh, it's going to be so much fun. It's a lively group and I will be speaking there as well uh, and having fun with everybody. Uh, and that'll be a wonderful adventure too. I'll be back in Baltimore. Baltimore is a beautiful city. I'm looking forward to it. And one of my private side trips, I'm gonna get away. I'm gonna try to go see the Lincoln Memorial. I know that's not actually in Baltimore and I don't know if I'm actually gonna have time to get there uh, because it is just over Labor Day weekend. Uh, but that's like my dream. That's one of my my dreams to uh, see the Lincoln Memorial and you know I'm all about living the dreams I think that uh, that's what we're here to do where it's again it's astrological magic to have a dream and then move yourself towards it and what was once just a thought or an idea or a fantasy uh, for it to be real and become real like there was nothing and now there's something I think that's one of the best things about being a human being uh, and so I'm all about making dreams come true if I could facilitate that for you I would um, but yeah Wherever it is that you are in your life, I wish you uh, awareness on your pathway towards living your dreams come true. And of course, I'll have a very big cruise event taking place. There are constant changes taking place to this, but it's going to be wonderful and rewarding uh, and a transformational uh, experience for everybody involved, myself included. Uh, I will be doing more than I initially anticipated, and I'm really excited about that as well. So the first night that we're on board, we are all going to eat dinner together, and then uh, we are going to do a, a meditation and sit under the stars to see uh, the actual conjunction we will be there the first night under the sky of the exact conjunction of Saturn and Pluto depending on visibility right we might not get the visibility that's okay but I'm already looking into like okay how can we get a telescope on board how can we try to see the night sky as much as possible together and I will be leading a guided meditation as part of uh, connecting the group that is karmically uh, called to be there together uh, and uh, as part of facilitating and being one part of uh, a bunch of people who will make this an incredible week journey. We will be docking in a few different cities and there will be optional excursions to different sacred sites, ancient sites, ancient temples. Uh, so I know that we will be docking, I believe in Belize, Honduras and Mexico. So that'll be really exciting as well. Um, and I just think that it's going to be amazing because I saw myself like what happens when people are pulled out of their comfort zone uh, and they're brought together with a group of people and how much that experience can stay with you long after it's over. And I think I've never been on a cruise, but being in the middle of water with each other um, it's going to be really powerful. So if it's something that's meant to be for you, don't limit your vision. It will come together. And whatever it is that we can do to facilitate that, to help you along that journey, just let us know. You can use the contact form on my website and uh, we'll do everything we can to get you on board. Thank you. I believe that's everything for today. I appreciate each and every one of you so very much. Thank you so much for being here. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.